so good evening everyone so this is the first lecture so what i'm going to do i'm going to record section by section so one topic at a time such that it would be easier for you to download uh, from the youtube as well as uh, uh, i think it would be easy to understand one session at a time and every session uh, we'll discuss the question in the tutorial session and you can also write me in a public forum uh, maybe uh, we'll have a hangout session or wave session where you can discuss so this is the lecture note which i'm going to share and i made a pdf and uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, try i'm trying to probably i'll write on top of this as well as i'll use uh, this microsoft board where i'll try to explain if i need so i'll basically go back and forth so let's start so uh, the first part of the lecture basically first uh, section is uh, wave particle duality so this is the uh, beginning of quantum theory not exactly at quantum mechanics so but if you look at the story it goes back uh, pretty far during the newton's time so <clears throat> Newton actually invented some theory which is called corpuscular theory. So, uh, so if you if you uh, look into that uh, note actually, so this theory where actually uh, what Newton thought is that the photons or the light are basically made of uh, particles and. Uh, then there was uh, Wiggins who actually thought that the light is basically a wave. So let me try to use the board. So what Newton thought was if you if you think of uh, light as some kind of wave, uh, Newton thought that there are some packets of the wave and these packets are basically some kind of particle corpuscle he says some kind of particles and we can actually thought they are like uh, waves so it could be uh, I mean later we got to know that these are electromagnetic wave so electromagnetic wave basically has two I mean uh, two polarizations but I'm just giving a cartoon diagram is amplitude uh, but uh, so this is not exactly the wave looks like but let's consider this wave so this is wave so we uh, the confusion that people have that whether light is really a particle or a wave and if you look at classically uh, it is difficult to answer because what do you mean by wave so if you if you put uh, a kind of a stone in a pond you see the the ripples of the on the surface uh, that is kind of a surface wave it propagates and uh, the two such wave can merge and you can get uh, maxima and minima and uh, so there are some patterns and we can show that the light basically uh, satisfies similar properties and these properties are observed by some phenomena which is called uh, interference or diffraction so what is interference so interference is basically when you have a light source from light from two different sources so maybe so you see here i see there is uh, there is there is one source but then this source can be have split one source and another source sources here so there are two sources so now when light actually in i mean uh, emerges here or here depending on the amplitudes are getting added up or cancelled you get different different patterns and if you put a cartons at the end you see that uh, at the zero you get the maxima and slowly you get this kind of pattern which is called diffraction pattern you already probably studied in high school or in the laboratory experiment so this was one uh, primary example where you know that it is in wave not in particle and this phenomena is uh, is some kind of uh, a verification of wave nature of anything that you study and basically diffraction is nothing but uh, another kind of interference and the interference happens uh, due to the phase difference between these two waves and this is why you see different fringes so what we know so far is that if you 
want to establish the property of a wave you should see whether you can establish the fact of interference or diffraction among those two objects or whatever but if you think of a classical particle what will happen so this experiment was done by young uh, and is called young's double slit experiment so i'll try to explain what it can be so let's say uh, let's consider a single slit again this is the single slit and you are throwing marbles on the single slit and these marbles what will happen if marbles are classical particles so most of the particle will not go through it they will just uh, i mean uh, reflected by the obstacle here and some of the marbles will go into it and you see only one pattern so this is the uh, this is the whatever uh, you see on the screen is just one pattern and this is the classical phenomena you can do that now what will happen if you reduce the size of the marble slowly slowly if you reduce it what will happen that is the most interesting thing and you know electrons electrons are nothing but very 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 tiny marble you can think of like that if they are particle so what will, what will happen so if you if you bombard now if you let's say you bombard uh, with two slits and you consider again do uh, they are classical particle you find two different fringes fringe 1 and fringe 2 you don't see you don't see a interference pattern because they are classical particle so distinctively now you know that the particle property and the wave properties are different for wave property even there are two slits here and here you see a, f a pattern interference pattern but for for classical particle you see two different fringes i mean just two different columns nothing else but this experiment is valid if you do with a little bit larger particle what we call classical particle but if you reduce the size of the particle and go to electrons what you see and the size is basically is size of the on the surface of the of the slits uh, so it i'll come to that uh, so it is uh, it, the size can be determined uh, in the order of magnitude way but so if you do this experiment with very tiny marble or electron and what you see you see the same diffraction fringes you see the maxima and you see uh, then slowly slowly maxima minima all these fringes you get dark fringes and the and the and the electron uh, bright fringes you can see so what you see is that even if the electron is a particle you see uh, the interference diffraction pattern of a wave so electron behaves like a wave but you can you can say okay i mean uh, there there are two slits and you are throwing lots of electrons so maybe electrons are somehow interfering but what you can do you ask this experiment like say this one the source oops i don't know what is going on here I cannot probably write on this. Let me go. Yes. So let's say you you use this source, and now you impinge one electron at a time. So basically, you are bombarding not lots of electron, but just one electron. So this one electron either go through slit number one or slit number two. It cannot go to both the slits, right? So when it goes to slit number one, it will give you fringe here, and it will give. And when it goes to slit number two, it will give fringe here. So you should get this one. But when the experiment was done, surprisingly, what we got is this one, not this one. So there is something very wrong. I mean, the electron, even though it it is a particle, it is going to go through both of the slits not a single slit so even you are bombarding a single electron from here when it passes it passes through the slits it is passing through both the slits and this is basically was the conspiracy of the quantum theory or this is the advent of quantum theory when people try to think about that the same particle can have a wave particle also wave properties also so that is called wave particle duality so I will recommend you all of you to read Feynman lectures volume 3 first chapter where he discusses very nicely. So let's say if you put an observer here, if you put an observer, so then the observer notices whether the electron is going to this slit or that slit. And then you see this classical pattern. You don't see this uh, interference pattern. 
so that means if you have the information that what is going on or you can observe that or you can track the path of the electron then you see again in the class second particle that means lack of information or lack of measurement of the information is giving us the interference pattern whenever you do not observe something then you outcome of this this thing is all possible possibilities which is the superposition because the moment you observe you know the electron is either going through slit number one or slit number two when you don't observe then you don't know it's like there is a story of Schrodinger's cat that the, if there is a cat in the room if you don't open the door you don't know if the cat is alive or dead it can be alive and dead both but the moment you open it is either alive or dead so this is the fundamental uh, I mean of uh, measurement theory which I'll come in uh, next section of the lecture so coming back to this uh, we understood that a single electron moving through two slits can give you a wave property and what we learn is that electron can behave like a wave so it is also a particle it is also a particle but it will behave like a wave and this wave and particle duality it will happen at length scale very small which is order of h i'll come to what is h in the next section so this phenomena is basically known as i mean this phenomena later uh, explained by uh, this physicist de Broglie who said that this is not only true for tiny uh, particle like electron but this is true for all the particles that we observe in nature so what he proposed why it's called hypothesis because he proposed it and we, we observe and there is some restriction of this observation he says any particle of anything if at, it has a momentum p so p is basically m times v if you just uh, measure it and classically then the wavelength the particle will have a wavelength so this particle will have a wavelength and this wavelength is basically the lambda which is h over p and h is a very very tiny number which is called um, uh, basically Planck's constant which is uh, 6.627 in 10 to minus 34 joule second and m is the mass of the particle so I have given you an exercise that you can calculate let's say you are 50 kilo or 60 kilo or 70 kilogram you can calculate your wavelength and you find that your wavelength is so tiny that it cannot be observed so here actually I have given the human body of 70 kilogram so let's say there is some guy like me 70 kilogram and have velocity 1.7 meter per second and then if you calculate the wavelength this wavelength comes out to be 10 to the minus 3 36 meter I mean 10 to the minus 10 meter is one angstrom so you can imagine how small it is Latin's co lattice constant is uh, around one angstrom so it is 10 to the minus 26 angstrom so forget about it you cannot observe it so every one of us has wavelength but that is so tiny that uh, the effect is minuscule you cannot observe but if you do the same exercise for a proton proton you know proton is basically uh, nucleus is made of protons and neutrons so proton has mass of around 1 GeV actually 938 MeV which is in the energy unit is this uh, and let's say it has uh, uh, energy I mean the, the kinetic energy of 10 MeV then the corresponding wavelength that you find is basically uh, 9 femtometer femtometer so basically 9 femtometer is nothing but 9 into 10 to the minus 15 meter you know this is the size of the nucleus so this is the size of the nucleus so this this is why basically you get the nuclear force and you can derive it also so I have given the solution so energy is half mb square you can just assume classically which is p square over twice m from there you can calculate the momentum and the, the mass is this and energy is this total energy and then you can calculate the momentum is 137 mev and then you use this de Broglie's hypothesis you multiply h by c and p by c because it's in the natural unit you find this is the 
wavelength. So this is the wavelength of a proton. So you imagine our wavelength is 10 to the minus 36 meter and the proton wavelength is basically 10 to the minus 15 meter, much, much bigger. So smaller the mass is or smaller the particle is, the wavelength will be bigger and bigger. And this is why when you go to very small or tiny mass particle like electron, you the, the wave property is emphasized. You can observe the wave property. For, for a human, it is not possible. Okay, so uh, let me stop and check uh, this recording and I will come back to uh, the next section.